today I wanted to go through setting up a Unify controller hosted directly in your NAS. Um, so this would save you purchasing one of their uh, cloud key devices. You can do this directly in the NAS using the NAS resources to do it. Um, there is a couple of ways to do it. Um, maybe for those of you that are maybe not so um, technically minded, you could go the virtualization station route and use the uh, Windows version of the Unify controller. You can install that on a Windows VM in virtualization station. Uh, for me, I'm going to go with the most efficient way, um, which is in container station. Um, hopefully this tutorial will help you set it up. It's very easy to do. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up container station. Uh, this is running on a TVS-H1288X, um, but it will work on um, any of our NAS that can use container station. It doesn't have to be uh, one as powerful as this. Um, so the first thing you're going to do in here is go to the create option. And in this search apps or images box, you want to search for Unify. Now, I'm going to see a little different result because I do already have the image downloaded. But when I click search, it's going to go from recommended to local because local, I've already got the uh, the item downloaded just in the interest of making the video quicker. Um, as your first time doing this, you won't have it locally stored. It will end up on the Docker Hub and you'll see lots and lots of choices for different versions. For me personally, um, I'm using the top one. I generally go with the one with the most star recommendations there. So the one here that says uh, Jacob Alberti, um, that's the one I'm going to use. Then you just click install. And what that's going to do is it's going to download uh, the file for you. That takes a couple of minutes on my internet connection. So I'm just going to go to the local one I've got and just click install. It's the exact same uh, item. It's just without the download option. Once it's done the download, you'll get this screen. Uh, you can name um, the container if you wish. Uh, you can set some limits on how much RAM and CPU usage it can use. I just usually leave them as default. Um, I go to the advanced settings and I go to the network option and I change the network mode from NAT to bridge. And I set a static IP address because I want this to be on a, uh, a set IP address so that I can access it. In my case, I'll choose that one there. So 10, 10, 20, 15 for me, because that's compatible with my network. Um, and I'm going to leave everything else as default and I'm going to click create. Confirm I'm okay with all the settings that it's set there and that's going to go off and create it. So I can go back to the overview section and once it's finished creating it, it's going to appear here and the status icon on the left hand side will go green. Uh, when it's green, it means it's running. Um, so we've got options over here for start terminal access and lots of other things. Um, you really don't need to do anything else here. All you have to do is remember that IP address that you set for the container. If you open up a new browser window and go to that, so 10.10.20.15 in my case, and this time I'm going to do a colon 8080 because that's the default port of the Unify controller, and I'm going to click uh, Enter. So now it's going to open you up at the setup wizard for that controller that you have running as a container. So it's not very difficult to set up. Um, so here you can name your controller. So I'll call mine uh, YouTube just so that I know which one it is. Um, tick the box, click next. Uh, sign in with your Ubiquiti account. So you can do this with your cloud account with Ubiquiti if you want. I'm going to switch to the advanced setup and I'm not going to use that option. Um, so here it wants the local administrator username. So I'll just do UBNT for Ubiquiti Networks password. I'll just do UBNT. Definitely make sure you choose uh, something a bit stronger than this. Um, and an email address. I'll just put my um, uh, QNAP email address in here. And then I'll click Next. And so now you've got some options for whether you want to optimize the network, uh, enable auto backup. You can get more information on these from Unify themselves. Um, so here it's saying devices set up. Please select the devices you'd like to configure. It's saying there's no devices. There it's done a quick search and it's found one of my access points that I have. Um, so if I was to tick that, it's going to adopt that access point into uh, my setup. I'll click next. It now wants the Wi-Fi setup. So I'll create a, um, a YouTube Wi-Fi um, and I'll put the same for the password. There we go. I'm going to combine my two gigahertz and five gigahertz networks together. I'm going to tick that. I'm going to click next. I want some basic information. I'll say that I'm in the UK. The time zone's correct. And then I'm going to click finish. Uh, so now it's going to log into it with HTTPS on a different port number. It's done that automatically. Here you click advanced and accept. So it depends which web browser you're using as to what these options would look like. It would look a little different in Chrome. This is Firefox. Uh, click OK. Now it wants you to log in. So I'm going to log in with UBNT and UBNT. Click sign in. 
So now there's my fully up and running setup Unify controller. Um, and I can do anything I want in here. Now I can go into the settings, change a bunch of things, um, go to the devices list. So we can see here that it's currently adopting the uh, UAP AC Pro that I had. Uh, so that's just getting that set up. So it'll go green eventually and the light on the front of the uh, the access point will go blue when it's fully ready. Um, but that's now setting it up, provisioning the Wi-Fi name, the password that I set up, um, any settings that are global within the Unify controller are all being assigned to that access point. Uh, you've got lots of options in the settings area here. So if you wanted to go through and change some things, you absolutely can. I don't need to see this video, but there's the, the YouTube Wi-Fi network we set up. You can set up guest hotspots, lots of other things, set up different networking information, uh, stuff for the system that affects the, the whole whole item, different advanced features if you wanted to go through and change some settings. Uh, but yeah, that's how you would set up a Unify controller um, on a QNAP NAS. Um, so I find the, the Container Station one a the most efficient way to do it. It uses the least amount of... Uh, CPU power and RAM to get it up and running. If you do it with a, a Windows VM, for example, um, you've got to spend quite a lot of RAM uh, just to get the Windows Virtual Machine fired up, let alone the uh, application for the Unify controller running within it. Um, but that's that up and running. Um, so it's going to be setting it up and getting the Wi-Fi network broadcasting. Um, and if you've got any other uh, Unify devices, they would have all shown up there that you could have adopted into the uh, the system as well. Um, hopefully you found that useful. If anybody has any questions, please do let me know. Uh, we can see here that it says it's online and ready. If I go and search for the uh, different Wi-Fi networks, we might see, if I look at the other networks, there's the YouTube Wi-Fi. So there's the access point already transmitting, ready to go. Um, so very easy to, to get set up. Uh, again, if anybody has any questions, do let me know and uh, I'll get back to you as quick as I can in the comment section. Thanks. Bye.